Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today's video is about some more classics that I think deserve good adaptations. This video is a follow-up to one I did a few weeks ago called Classics That Deserve Good Adaptations. I'll link that in the description box if you're interested in seeing my first selection of classics that I think deserve better at the hands of filmmakers. But as soon as that video came out, I realized that I'd forgotten quite a few classics from that list. Starting with one book that I can't believe I forgot to mention the first time around, and that is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Thank you at this point uh, to the two commenters that mentioned it in the comments to the last video. As soon as I read those, I thought, oh yeah, actually, I completely agree with that. Frankenstein deserves a good adaptation. This book was published in 1818. Less than a hundred years later, there was already a film adaptation of it. Now we are more than a hundred years away from that first film adaptation and it's been adapted dozens of times. But I think there is a lack of an adaptation that brings out not just the gothic horror aspects of the story, but also leans more into the romantic themes of it. And I don't mean the love story that's in the novel, but I'm talking capital R, romantic. I'm talking about this and this and this. That connection between the romantic movement and nature that is so really inherent to the plot of the story, the question of where man stands within nature, what is the place of humanity within creation, all of that I feel is often left out of adaptations because they tend to focus more on the whole scary monster ghost guru aspect of it. And my ideal adaptation of this would also focus more heavily on the setting of the book and actually stick to the settings in the book, which are Italy, Switzerland, Germany. There is so much that can be visually done with those settings. Just imagine a sweeping drone shot of the Alps and then zooming in on the creature as he observes a family of farmers in their little hut, trying to understand their human ways. I want to see that. I want to see the bustling nightlife of Naples, where we first get to meet Dr. Frankenstein and his family. I want to see the university setting of Ingolstadt, all scholars and dark academia. There is so much aesthetically that can be done with this novel that goes beyond scary monster lightning bolt. I also want an adaptation that sticks to the time period in which the novel is set, which is, well, I think filmmakers have a bit of freedom there because it is just set somewhere in the 18th century. Or at least I want an adaptation that sticks to the time period in which the novel was written, which is the 1810s. But mostly I want an adaptation that shows the monster or the creature, as he is actually known in the book, to be as much a protagonist of the story as Dr. Victor Frankenstein. And yes, I am pronouncing it like that. I want a portrayal of the creature as a deeply thoughtful and philosophical being whose inner turmoil is the emotional center, the emotional heartbeat of the story. I don't just want an adaptation that's sympathetic to the plight of the monster, because I think at this point we've all realized that there is more to the creature than the lust for human flesh. But I want a adaptation that really asks those questions about humanity and what makes a being a human versus not. Because that's what the book really is all about. Hashtag justice for Frankenstein's monster. The second book that I'd like to see adapted well is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This novel from 1890 is actually my favorite classic, a book I have read and reread many, many times. And people are always surprised by just how much criticism I have for this book. But if you really love a book, you know that its flaws are things that you think about more than maybe for the books that you don't love quite so much. As flawed as the original novel is, the adaptations have just never gotten it right. And yes, not even the presence of Colin Firth 
can save the latest attempt from this century. And perhaps I am asking too much here. I'm not a filmmaker, as should be blindingly obvious at this point, but I can imagine that the picture of Dorian Gray is really quite hard to adapt to film. Firstly, much of the book is dialogue, and it's dialogue that reads very well. But even if you just recite it out loud, it sounds more poetic than natural. Film and television as a medium is very much driven by the suspension of disbelief, by the idea that what is happening on the screen is real people talking to each other, whereas the dialogue in the picture of Dorian Gray sounds much more like a play than actual real humans speaking. The second problem I imagine is quite a hard one to overcome, is that the book itself has a very small cast of characters, with most of it revolving around the three men at the centre of the story. The painter Basil Hallward, the dandy Lord Henry Wotton, and of course, the eponymous Dorian Gray. Okay, so unexpectedly the sun has just decided to come up, so... Is this better? So the book very heavily focuses in on these three men and any other characters, in particular any female characters, are two-dimensional at best. So filmmakers are really having to scramble to turn those uninspired side characters into interesting people on the screen. So unlike with Frankenstein, I don't particularly want an adaptation that is super faithful to the book, because I don't think the way that the book is written holds up well on film. But I do want an adaptation that is faithful to the themes and the ideas in the book. I want an adaptation that explores these themes of morality, sexuality, narcissism, desire. I want an adaptation that combines the glamorous and the seductive with the horrible and the gothic, just like the novel does. So for this one, I propose a mini-series instead of a film. Six parts if it's BBC, maybe Netflix can stretch it to ten. I want this series to add to the story of the book in terms of plot, in terms of characters, to flesh it out, add new characters, make them interesting, make them into real people with real problems, but draw on the themes that made the original book so scandalous when it was released. The next book I want to talk about, and another Victorian classic, is Villette by Charlotte Bronte from 1853. And I was surprised to find that this book has only been adapted once in 1970. I think it's time for a new attempt. Villette follows a young English teacher as she moves out of her home country to Europe. The fictional town of Villette is set in a sort of fictionalized Belgium, and Charlotte Bronte basically threw in every European stereotype and cliche that she could get her hands on. But apart from its weird anti-European, anti-Catholic propaganda, this story deep down is the story of unrequited love, set in the intriguing setting of an elite girls' boarding school. The protagonist, Lucy, has to navigate her daily struggles with her students, her life in this new, strange country, and her feelings for a man who seems to prefer someone else. This book has many flaws, and many aspects of it really heavily dated as a Victorian novel with Victorian morality that simply would not translate well into a 21st century film. But I think with a bit of sensitivity, this could be really fun to watch. The pining romance, the back and forth between teacher and students, the culture shock aspect of it. If done well, I think this could make for an amazing film. Next, I want to talk about a 20th century post-apocalyptic classic, The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. This was published in 1951, and it has had a few TV adaptations since, uh, as well as one notable film adaptation from 1962, which I'm sure is fun to watch if you're into that sort of cheesy mid-century horror film, but I am not. My problem with the adaptations of The Day of the Triffid so far are that they just don't hit the tone of the story. The whole sort of walking, flesh-eating monster plants, they get that right, more or less, with varying degrees of success at actually visualising these deadly plants. But the early Cold War setting, the critique of government in particular, society in general, 
the surprisingly progressive discussion around gender and gender roles, as well as just the silliness, the humour and the Britishness of it, is kind of missing. And I want an adaptation that includes those things as well as the sheer horror of an unravelling society in the wake of plant-induced mass murder. These were the four novels that I wanted to talk about in detail, but I do have some honourable mentions to add to this list. The first one is I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. This is a very short novel from 1954, famously adapted in 2007 into a huge blockbuster Hollywood film with Will Smith. But I would like a new adaptation that hits the quiet, eerie tone of the book, the themes of isolation and desperation. And ideally, I would like to see an adaptation that's set in the 1970s, because the book, while written in the 1950s, is set in the future of the 1970s. So you could have a sort of retro-futurism aesthetic to the film that I think would make it more interesting than the contemporary setting of the 2007 adaptation. My next honourable mention is another Mary Shelley novel, and that is her book The Last Man from 1826. This is like the original post-apocalyptic story. It's set during a humanity-wiping plague, imagine that, and it follows the life of a man and his friends who try to change the world just as it's about to end. Would make for an epic, heartbreaking, again, capital R, romantic film that leaves a lot of potential for political messages and societal criticism. Finally, I would like to see an adaptation of Marriage by Susan Ferrier from 1818. Why do period dramas always have to be so, you know, dramatic? This is a Regency comedy that you wouldn't want to adapt too faithfully. It is not the most expertly written book but that has plenty of material for an absolutely hilarious comedy set in part in 19th century Scotland, in part in 19th century London, that really leaves the opportunity for some very sharp digs at both Regency and modern society and both Regency and modern romantic relationships. It could be a straight-up comedy, it could be a rom-com, so much opportunity there. I really want filmmakers to see the funny sides of classic literature and not just focus on the big and heavy and dramatic. So what do you think? Which classics would you like to see adapted well? Let me know in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree with my picks? Also, I have a little list on my phone of adaptations that I already think are perfect. If you're interested in a sort of more positive video about classics and film adaptations, let me know and I'll make a My Favourite Classics Adaptations video. Thank you for watching. Bye!